Giants, shapeshifters, demons, vampires, monkey people, demigods, Anunnaki, Nephilim, and weapons of mass destruction. Welcome to the history you're not taught in school. Ladies and gentlemen, I am your host, Rex Bear. What you are looking at is the Battle at Lanka, the Ramayana. This is an ancient battle that has been written about and passed down for generations. Thousands and thousands and thousands of years ago, people were more into science fiction than they are now. Or is science fiction science fact? Is fact more science fiction than science fiction? Well, what you're looking at is literally the depiction of these battles that went on between everything above that I just described to you. Are these texts copies of the Sumerian cuneiform tablets that talk about the demigods, the giants, the black-headed people that were manipulated, the archetypes that are linked to cosmic events and scenarios? Let me share with you also some information on the Ramayana. It's an ancient Indian epic poem which narrates the struggle of the divine prince Rama to rescue his wife, Sita, from the demon king, Ravana. Now, when you look at this right here, at jita-society.com, I'll leave the links in the video description box for all of these screens that I'm sharing with you. The Kumbhakara Kumbakarna is a giant. Maybe a Nephilim. Maybe it's a huge weapon of mass destruction. And the way that it was described in these stories as being a huge giant like Jack and the Beanstalk. But let me read a couple parts to you real quick. The Kumbakarna was thus disturbed in a sleep which otherwise would have been months long. But before he could find out the cause for this, he began to eat and drink the heaps of meat and the pots of blood and wine kept ready for him. One thing I want to add is this being, let me share a picture with you what he looks like. This guy right here is the younger brother of Ravana in the famous epic that I'm going to be reading to you here in a minute, parts of that we're describing, the Ramayana. Now, he is a huge monster with a great appetite. He's described as good character and a great warrior, although he killed and ate many monkeys, only to show his power. Now, when it actually gets into the battle, kind of reminds me of some type of just incredible weapon. You know, maybe he really was this giant. Maybe he really was what is described in the Book of Enoch, when they put a, a reference point on how big these giants actually are, hundreds of feet tall, and it, cert it certainly is possible. But what's up with all these depictions of giants and monkey people back in the day in multiple cultures, multiple civilizations for thousands of years if it wasn't real? Now, the Venara is the monkey people. This is the group that's referred to as living in forests. They're depicted as monkeys. Literally. Look at this. And then you've got the, the blue demigod, which reminds me of the tall blues that you've probably seen in TV shows and movies that are usually at either the top or close to the top of the apex when it comes to the control grid of certain extraterrestrial species. They're the ones controlling the ship. They're the pilots. They're the captains. Now, certainly, I wouldn't say they're above the mantis. Yet, I would say for what for their dynasty, the, the blue ETs are upper echelon. They're above the greys, at least the ones that are depicted in the Hollywood shows. So, could this blue being actually be an extraterrestrial. Now, Rama, once again, if we take a look at this picture of Rama, you'll see 
He's depicted as blue. He's considered a very kind God, caring God uh, with a high set of morals and standards. From the research that I've done thus far, I haven't dove deep enough yet to, to verify that I think this guy has high morals. From the little bit that I have read, though, that's what these, these texts are claiming. And so far, it seems to be pretty good. Now, like for example, the word with two contextual meanings, Rama, in one context is found, states dark, dark colored, black, as is related to the term, which means night. In another context is found the word meaning pleasing, delightful, charming, beautiful, lovely. The word is sometimes used as a suffix in different Indian languages and religions. Now, he is also the seventh avatar of Vishnu. One thing I wonder about that is when it says seventh avatar of Vishnu, does that mean like a, a, a just a copy, like a Cylon, transferring consciousness? Now, the Vishnu avatar named Rama is also known by other names. He's called Ramachandra, beautiful, lovely moon. Solar di it's um, the descendant of Raghu, the solar dynasty in Hindu cosmology. The root of the word Rama is Ram, which means stop, stand still, rest, rejoice, be pleased. So there's a lot of there's there's a lot to this deity. Now let's get back to the vampires. Now let's let's talk about the demons, the Rakshasha. These are the demons that are depicted, or those that are referenced kind of like a demon, man eaters, vampires, flesh eaters, horns, fangs, etc. And you can see, take a look at this image here. That reminds me a lot of these Egyptian hieroglyphics, hieroglyphics, which show very similar headsets, just not the fangs. You will see, I can definitely see the solar deity energy there. The horns, the, the central grid pattern, the, the archetype bridging from the left to the right of the sun, the higher third eye. Yet what's up with the fangs? Don't mess with that dude. He's a man eater. And here's the giant again. Depictions of this giant eating the monkey people for his brother. And this is where he gets slaughtered because he finally gets taken out. And they start cutting off his body parts. And then he starts walking around with, with stubs, it says. And they finally cut off his head. And then, uh, then his brother gets sad. And, and here's some more images of the monkey people. Here is Kishkinka, which is described in that... Ramayana as a higher archetype monkey, you know, one of the higher title positions. And then the Hanuman, not a human, but a Hanuman. Isn't that interesting? If you take out the A-N, you've got human. This is another divine monkey and devotee of Rama. And then you've got Angada. And these are all described in this text and many more. Is another deity, monkey being deity. And then we'll just jump back here to the Rakshasha. What is this? Did they get this information from the Sumerians? Did the Sumerians get it from the Akkadians? I mean, not the Akkadians, the Arata people. Where did the Arata people get it from? The Anunnaki, of course. Yet, where did the Anunnaki get their information from? Or, are the Anunnaki, is Anu, An, the father of the dynasty of the Anunnaki, is that as far back as it goes into physical vibrational manifestations, yet is he even at that level? Or is he at that level at one point and then at the higher vibrational frequency at the other, which would explain how these Anunnaki, these demigods, the demiurgs, these higher level beings can change shapes, can change form, can transfer consciousness, can go throughout time and space, 
can move into any form of vibrational frequency pattern they so choose, maybe within certain parameters, maybe, maybe beyond that. Maybe when these beings came down to earth, if they did, which I believe they did, when they were formed, it could have easily been just instantly. Such as human, our original, or the original earthling of this planet was most likely just created. I doubt it started from a, you know, a, a single cell and then just kept splitting until you had a monkey and then aliens come down and, and manipulate the monkey. It's most likely a very highly evolved earth being, our ancestors, that didn't have, maybe the reason they were easily tricked is because they didn't have the, the mindset to trick people. They didn't have the mindset to lie or deceit or to manipulate. They just were. And then this intelligent set of beings come down. Maybe they're not as highly evolved in the spiritual aspect at that point, yet they were more so in the physical aspect, making it easier to trick a being that is, I'm not going to say ignorant, um, because I, I don't feel that ignorant is the right word, more like naive because of the kind hearts that our ancestors probably had. And now, because we've got not only that DNA, We've got the DNA of these other beings that are a warlike dynasty. That's why oftentimes we're fighting ourselves within our own minds. You've got the, the angel with the white robe on the right and the devil with the red spandex on the left. Do it, do it, don't do it, don't do it, do it, do it, don't do it, don't do it. I wonder what it would be. I would really, <clears throat> I think the next heavy meditation that I do, the real deep meditation, I'm going to go as far back as I can and find the primordial form, the original earth being. What was the original earth being? Who was the original earth being? What opportunities did the original earth people have? Strong points. And when you get into this whole transhuman movement now, where people are like, oh, I don't want to extend my life, that would be taking away from God, or that would be uh, messing up what God did naturally. Do you really think you're the natural form of what God made? You don't think you've already been messed with for years, decades, previous generations? Wouldn't it be neat to find out what the original copy was, what our original version was like. I'm going to do some more research into that and find out. I want to go way, way back. Millions, billions of years, not just hundreds of thousands of years. I think we've been doing a really good job here at Leaf Project, especially with your help, ladies and gentlemen, connecting many of these dots that connect to the manipulators, the engineers, the Anunnaki, and with all, the own, with all of the personal sinks that I've had that I've shared with you guys, I feel that there is enough data out there to confirm over 50%, to, to, to validate over 50%, thinking about 75% conservatively, that there is a off-world or an entity that was and is manipulating the higher levels of government and business and many people around the world right now that is either was either originally off world and came to this planet or survived these cataclysms and continued to evolve maybe it left the planet came back maybe it was under the center of the earth maybe it was so far out into time and space that when these Anunnaki opened up a portal they weren't supposed to, it got attached to them, then they got infected, and then they infected the human genome by transferring DNA to human beings. 
So therefore, we have to deal with that as well. That might explain it's when some people feel that we're born into sin. Well, what's your definition of sin? Not necessarily we're born into sin. We're born into something that because of our tainted DNA, possibly, this is just a theory, folks, that we not only have to fight off these serpent archons that are embedded in our DNA, which is depicted throughout various artifacts, tons of artifacts, the serpents around the body, not inside the body. The Gnostics thinking that the mother demon of all is the flesh that we reside in. What if we could break out of that DNA paradigm and actually have a higher level of consciousness, manipulate the DNA to where the serpent didn't, the, the dark serpents didn't control us? There's light serpents also, yet why would light serpents want to control us? They would want to help us. There's a difference between controlling and helping. So thank you for listening to my rant. Have a beautiful day. Question everything. Make sure to continue to check out the YouTube.com slash Clandestine Time Lord channel for live shows. Not everybody gets the updates when we do live shows. If you want to become a contributing member at LeakProject.com, that would be awesome. And thank you for everybody that is already a contributing member. If you would share these podcasts far and wide, social media platforms, alternative news sites, that way we can get the word out to more people. And most importantly, and I hope you want to be the change. I hope your change is good. Be the change you want to see.